In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the features of the recent earthquake map on the Alaska Earthquake Center's website. On the left hand side, you will see a list of events. If you click on any event in the list, it will highlight that particular event with a pop up showing you information about that earthquake itself. You can also get information about an earthquake by clicking on it on the map. If you would like to see the legend so that you know what the different colors and the different symbol sizes mean, all you need to do is click on the legend button here next to the event list. It will show you that the, earth, that the circles are sized based on magnitude and colored by time. Now I will show you what tools you can use to interact with the recent earthquake map. The first tool you will see under the tools menu on the left hand side is a slider bar to show earthquakes with magnitude greater than a certain magnitude. You can also toggle between the earthquakes being colored by time or by depth. The next set of tools that you can use are called the data layers. If you toggle on each layer, such as the stations layer, you will see all of the stations in Alaska are now plotted on the map. Click on a station and see the station name and some basic information about that station. You can also turn on fault layers or volcanoes. You can also click on this information button and it will pop up some information about the station layers and if you so desire or want to look at the stations in Google Earth you can download the KML file straight from this information tab. Under the analyze tag you will see some other interesting things that you can do to interact with the map. So under analyze the first thing you will want to do is click on draw and then pick two places on the map that you're interested in. The first We'll click on, we'll label it A. The second place that I click, it will label B. And this white box in the center, if you pull it to the side and it can go up or down, it will select your entire area of interest and you can adjust it if you so desire. And then if you come over here and click on cross section and plot, it will pull up a cross section from A to B, showing you the depth of all of the earthquakes in that area. Next, I will show you another interesting feature. If we click clear, it will remove our box and it will show us the draw option again. I'm going to click and I'm going to look at this group of earthquakes in the Gulf of Alaska. You can click on cumulative and then plot. And this will show you a cumulative count of earthquakes over the last two weeks. To investigate an event further, we'd go back to the main map page to open the event bubble. When you click on view event page, you will be taken to an event page specific to that event. Every event will have a summary tab, which will tell you the magnitude and location of the earthquake, a list of the nearest communities, and an opportunity to report whether or not you felt that earthquake. It will give you the latitude and longitude, depth, time, and date for that earthquake. And you can click on and see the stations that are closest to locating that earthquake. The next tab that you will see that every, every event will have is the waveforms tab. In this tab, you will be able to see a selection of the waveforms that were used to locate that earthquake. The next tab that will be available for every earthquake is the tectonic setting. The tectonic setting tab show, gives you a basic overview of the area in which the earthquake occurred. Another feature that you will see for larger earthquakes are shake maps. Shake maps are a map representation of the predicted shaking that would be experienced from a given earthquake. The last thing I want to show you is if you go back to the summary tab and I had shown you that you can click on a particular station and if it's an AK network it will have the option to view the station page. If you click on station page it will take you to the dedicated page for that particular station. 
you will see some information about this, the station itself, its location, what year it was installed, and what sensors are out there. You can also see waveforms from those stations. So this is the last hour of waveform data at station SAW. And you can also click on it on the last 24 hours and see the last 24 hours worth of data at station SAW.